In this video, I will follow the markers of my Y chromosome back to Adam and show, in the process, that the lineage back to Adam is recent and starts in the Near East. In 2005, IBM and the National Geographic Society initiated a study to chart new knowledge about the migratory history of the human species by using sophisticated laboratory and computer analysis of DNA contributed by hundreds of thousands of people from around the world. I selected analysis of my Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is passed on intact through the male line, changed only by random mutational events. It is thus used to trace genetic lineages far back in time. People who share markers have a common ancestor. To explain further, humans are 99.9 percent .9 identical at the DNA level. To distinguish people, geneticists focus on the regions where they know there is variation between people. They scan places in the genome with known markers that allow them to assign people to clans or haplogroups. This is done for a dozen or more variable positions, identified as belonging to particular haplogroups. For example, in this slide, we see a DNA sequence for Larry and Juan in which there are variable positions in two places. By examining hundreds of sequences in individuals, the Genographic Project identified 39 haplogroups among the more than 100,000 individuals tested. They also identified ancient relationships among these haplogroups. The diversity associated with the marker common to multiple haplogroups helps to identify its location. For example, in Central Asia we see representatives of all of marker M45's descendant lineages. By tracking concentrations for different markers, migration routes are established. My Y chromosome analysis showed I belong to haplogroup R1b, M343, subclade R1, B1, B2, M269. In parts of Spain and Ireland, more than 90% of men belong to this group. The Genographic Project focused on seven significant mutations between me and Adam. As you can see from the chart, the mutations track my migration route from East Africa, descending from a Eurasian Adam. However, we shall suggest below that the Near East was a more likely starting point. Let us now trace my lineage, starting with the most recent mutation, M343. The man with this marker lived in Spain or France, and his descendants moved on to the British Isles, including Ireland. They also moved into Italy. This allows us to provide some approximate dates for this marker. My ancestors were part of a group, the Normans, who invaded and settled in England and Ireland from 1066 A.D. onwards, so we know the marker existed before 1066 A.D. We also know Celtic people moved into Italy and attacked and burned Rome in 390 B.C., so this mutation probably happened before 390 B.C. The mutation that preceded M343 was M173. This mutation belonged to Celtic groups that moved into Europe from the east, then spread west and south. Once again, this facilitates dating. David Rankin, in his study on early Celtic peoples, has linked this Celtic movement to the Urnfield and Hallstatt cultures of 1300 BC to 800 BC. He discusses groups belonging to this culture in numerous Eastern European countries. However, there is another significant group with this mutation. It is found in Egypt. Tutankhamun, pharaoh of the New Kingdom, had his DNA analyzed by German and Egyptian scientists. His DNA had marker M173. As current historical interpretation states, he ruled from 1333 B.C. to 1323 B.C., 
we know this marker emerged before 1333 BC. Therefore marker M173 dates from at least 1400 BC. This slide shows the distribution of those with Tutankhamun's marker. It shows clearly that his line is very similar to our haplogroup. Continuing back in time, we come to marker M207. According to the analysis provided to me, our ancestors were living in Central Asia at this time. Some started to move towards the European subcontinent. Another group turned south and eventually made it as far as India. This report also states that glaciers were expanding over much of Europe and Western Eurasia at this time. This allows us to suggest some tentative dates for this marker. Michael Ord, who has written extensively on the Ice Age, writes that glaciers started expanding around 2000 BC and continued for some 700 years until 1300 BC. So this marker appeared before 1300 BC. David Rankin identifies many of the similarities between the Celts and Indians. This slide shows some of these. Celtic and Indo-Iranic languages have many similarities. These include general vocabulary, certain morphological features, specialized lexical items concerning personal qualities and relationships, functions within the respective societies, and names of commonly used tools and instruments. We continue back in time to marker M45. This was a very significant marker as it includes groups that moved east to China and Siberia and also through Siberia into North and South America as well as our group that moved towards Europe. The groups moving east settled in the game-rich steeps of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and southern Siberia. Research on Scythians in Siberia specifically the South Siberian Kurgan people show links with the Celtic groups. These are noted in the slide where the black dots over Western Europe shows peoples linked with them. Also connected with this marker are groups that cross the Bering Straits into North America. The slide shows the Bering Straits. Many scientists state that during the last ice age the sea level was low enough to allow humans and animals to navigate on foot from Asia to North America over the Bering Land Bridge, now the Bering Straits. This reinforces approximate dates for this marker. As noted earlier, the Ice Age started around 2000 BC and lasted some 700 years until 1300 BC. So if they crossed before 1300 BC, then the range for this marker is probably 1800 BC to 1400 BC. Going back further in time, we come to marker M9. The genographic report notes that descendants of this marker spread far and wide and indeed populated much of the planet. Some groups moved into Central Asia and others moved south into what is now Pakistan and the Indian subcontinent. If the migrants who moved into China were the first people who set up dynastic rule in China, then we have approximate dates for it, as the Zia dynasty has been estimated to have started around 2205 BC. M89, the next marker, is found in 90 to 95 percent of all non-Africans. This man was born in northern Africa or the Middle East. As can be seen from the slide, this man's descendants included those who moved southeast through South Asia and then on into the Pacific. Finally we come to marker M168. In the report provided to me by IBM and the National Geographic Society, M168 is the marker of my earliest ancestor. The IBM and National Geographic report states that this man who gave rise to this marker probably lived in the region of the Rift Valley. Not only is M168 the marker for our earliest ancestor, 
It is the first marker for almost all the people of the world. Spencer Wells, the director of the Genographic Project, writes, Together M168 and L3A constitute a Eurasian Adam and Eve. Everyone in Eurasia, and consequently the Americas, traces their lines of descent on their mother and father's sides of the family back to them. Specifically, the Genographic Project identified 39 Y-chromosome haplogroups into which they categorized all individuals studied. Of these 39, only two did not start with the designation Ancestral Line Adam M168. These two haplogroups were A with marker M91 and B with marker M60. One could conclude that two individuals separated from a main group in which one man later developed mutation M168 and these two individuals or their descendants subsequently developed mutations M60 and M91. The Rift Valley, where the ancestor with M168 lived, extends from the Orentes River in Syria to the Transvaal in South Africa. This slide shows the Jordan Valley, part of the Dead Sea Transform Fault, also called the Dead Sea Rift, which starts at the East Anatolian Fault in southeast Turkey. The National Geographic report states that, based on fossil and archaeological evidence, they conclude my ancestor lived in the eastern Rift Valley in eastern Africa. However, the fossil and archaeological evidence has been evaluated and rejected in my wider study. This slide shows some of the reasons for the rejection. They include the fact that fossils found in eastern Africa are incomplete and generally unreliable and that the dating for these fossils has been rejected by many. Therefore, fossil evidence claiming an Eastern African origin is unacceptable. Rather, the evidence clearly suggests that my ancestor lived at the northeast or Syrian end of the Rift Valley. Others who have studied my haplogroup also concur with the Near East origin. One, Patricia Balleresque writes, Haplogroup R1, B1, B2, RM269 is the commonest European Y-chromosomal lineage, increasing in frequency from east to west and carried by 110 million European men. The geographical distribution of its microsatellite diversity is best explained by spread from a single source in the Near East via Anatolia during the Neolithic. The distribution of this lineage the diversity within it, and estimates of its age all suggest that it spread with farming from the Near East. Taken with evidence on the origins of other lineages, this indicates that most European Y chromosomes descend from Near East farmers. Balleresque is not alone. This slide shows others who have analyzed genetic migrations. Professor Mark Jobling, for example, notes movement from the Near East. He states, European farming began around 9000 BC in the Fertile Crescent, a region extending from the eastern Mediterranean coast to the Persian Gulf, and which includes modern-day Iraq, Syria, Israel, and southeast Turkey. Also Celtic and other histories, dating back some 2500 years, confirm our ancestors came from the northeastern end of the Rift Valley. They trace Celtic people back to Magog, then his father Japheth and his father Noah. They moved from the area which is now southeast Turkey, Syria and Iraq to the northeast of the Black Sea. For example, Josephus, the famous Jewish historian, wrote around 50 AD that Magog led out a colony which from him were called Magogs, but by the Greeks called Scythians. They settled east of the Black Sea. Finally, the technical skills of the Neolithic peoples, our ancestors, who expanded from the Near East, are known to have originated in the northern end of the Rift Valley.